G'day guys, Paul here from The Hook and The Cook. Welcome back to our channel today. I'm out on the, the flats. I'm just gonna chase some whiting on poppers and a few other little soft plastics and a few lures. And I'm out for a little bit of fun today. Absolutely beautiful, glorious day. Absolutely glorious day. Fantastic. Let's go. So hopefully uh, we'll um, be able to nail a couple today. Um, it's one of my favourite pastimes, just wandering down here for a couple of hours. Uh, it takes all the stress away. Not that I'm uh, living too much stress anymore. But um, yeah, I absolutely love it. I love it. Pretty good fish. I don't know, I don't think they're widening. They could be Trevally a little bit further up here. Um, so I'm gonna have to go in a little bit deeper up to my waist, I think, to get up there. Just got to watch out for the big stingrays here. We got some really big stingrays. You don't want to stand on one of them guys. But I've got the wind behind me, so hopefully I'll be able to cast out there. Let's see how we go. So what I'm using at the moment is one of these sugar pen uh, poppers, and I've just put some um, assist hooks on the back of it um, because the whiting will come up and they'll just suck these hooks in, hopefully. And uh, if there's anything else around, any other predators, hopefully we might hook one of those. So there is a little bit of life and there's a few things happening. Anyway, let's have a crack and we'll see how we go. What I want to do is just um, flick these poppers around these little weed beds here. And hopefully... There's a fish around. I just work them all the way back and keep the rod tip high. And uh, if uh, whiting does come up and try and hit it, just keep reeling. If you stop, that just turns them off. Have you seen that happen now? Just come up. That was a bloody good fish. <laughs> oh, that's what I love about it. He came up, gave it a hiding, and then didn't quite hook up. Beautiful. That's sort of the fun part of doing this. Oh, you see the lure go in the air then? <laughs> that was a flathead that came out. Oh my god. I don't know if you got that on camera, but that was awesome. <laughs> Came out like a bloody marlin. Oh, lovely. Let's see if we can get him again. He launched himself at that. Absolutely launched himself. Yeah, so I'm just going to pop this little uh, lure on. I've not used this lure before. We're not doing too well on the, um, on the poppers at the moment. So I'm just going to pop this little guy on. I bought this for bass. So uh, we'll see how we go. I'm just going to... It's, uh, it's a cool little lure. I've not really used it. And... Um, just having a look at the bait that's hanging around. It's all around about this size. So what I'm going to do is just sort of try and cast it amongst all these shadows here and hopefully there'll be a flooded waiting. So we'll give it a go. Okay guys, I've just uh, gone to a little hard body here in the um, shallows and um, this flooded's just come up and smacked it. I wasn't getting much luck on the... on the poppers. And there we go, there's a nice little floody just taking the hard body. Let's bring him round. Uh, and it casts quite well, this little hard body. You know, this is the first time I've actually used it. I've had it in the box for ages. I bought it for bass. And uh, yeah, this is a uh, tiny little flood. It's just come up and absolutely smacked it as it's going past a little bit of weed there. So might persist with this until the, uh, we see a few whiting coming on. 
But um, what a great that way to you know sort of spend your day. And I'll show you what tackle that I'm using a little bit later on, because um, I don't take much with me when I do this. And uh, yeah, it's just a little bit of fun. So I get the hooks out of this guy with hopefully without um, him stinging me. I'm pretty accident prone at the moment. Just had a second flood out on, and I've just popped it. Just trying to put the. Uh, the camera on. Yeah, so uh, working quite well, this little guy amongst these weeds. And uh, he just fell off that little fella. So I'm just really just slow rolling it out of the weeds. Okay, onto a better flood out here. Nice floody. So what's turned into a bit of a whiting session has now turned into a bit of a flooded session, which is really good. You can hear that wind, he's a good flooded too. Beauty, look at that. I might have to take him out for a feed until I get him in. I'm on super light gear at the moment. And what fun this is when you're, um, you know, you're just coming down here um, in the shallows. I think it's the best way to catch fish, it really is. I'll be so careful with this guy now that he doesn't uh, bust me off. This is a uh, this lure has just decided to work for me, which is fantastic. So, how am I going to get him in? That's the problem. I've got right in the middle here, I'm going to have to sort of try and tire him out. Just let him relax there for a minute. Keep his head down. He's just lip hooked. I've got a little net in my uh, bag, which I can put him in. By that mouth, I'll be right. Right, got you. There we go. Beautiful. Have a look at that guy. It's a cracking fish. Not bad, just on the flats here. And uh, I'll cook him up and do something with him. And to show you a nice little dish with a flathead, and I'll just see if we can get some more now. My wife's going to be happy. keep net here which I can put him in there we go he's in there I'll just tie him to my pole for now all right let's go and see if we can get another one There you go, he's popped off. Anyway, has a good release. Don't even, didn't even need to get rid of him there. Saves me getting stung by him. So that's, that's the fourth floody. Well guys, uh, we're gonna get back home. Put this little baby up. I'll just give you a better look at him. Good looking fish. There you go, beautiful. We'll cook that up when we get home tonight. And it uh, should be absolutely beautiful. All right, we'll see you back at home. So I'm just going to go through a little bit of the gear that I was using today and what I use when I go on the flats. 
and what generally I take with me. Um, basically, I always take, um, as Scotty Lyons likes to call it, the hungry bag. Okay, um, had this for about four years. Really good condition, probably lasts me a lifetime. Um, excellent. You can put everything in these guys, and um, they've got little holes here, so it um, doesn't hold any water. Um, you can even throw your catch in there if you really want to. Also, you need a good hat. Um, definitely with the sun out there, it absolutely kills you, especially if you're going to fish for a couple of hours. Um, face mask is something else that I always throw in the bag. Um, I've, I've learned my lesson uh, coming up here to Queensland. I'm sure it's the same in Sydney as well, but I just don't know about the sun up here in Queensland. It absolutely melts your face off, so um, a good uh, face mask really good. Also, I always take um, my keep net, okay, just in case I do catch a decent fish that I want to take home with me. Um, that way I can keep it fresh in the water. I always have a little esky in the, in the back of the car with some ice. So that's always handy, saves you carrying a heap of ice. Um, a pair of scissors, just for your braid. What else do I use? I always take uh, 50 plus, goes in the bag as well. Um, definitely that is something that is imperative. Take myself a little ruler. It's not the best ruler in the world as you can see, but at least it gives me a 30 centimetre mark. So I know that the whiten are legal, brim are legal, and uh, I can pretty much guesstimate with this if the flooded are legal as well. Um, good pair of Polaroid sunglasses. Obviously my preferred brand is Tonic. Um, they are amazing. Um, they've um, been on board with us for quite a few years now, and they're a fantastic Polaroid. I've had these for ages, and I've knocked them around, and they don't get scratched. They're pretty scratch proof. I've got no scratches on it. I've had these for oh, well over a year and a half now, and they are absolutely amazing. Another thing that you need is um, these for your sunnies as well. So these are absolutely rotten now. I've had them for ages, and my wife gets very cranky with me bringing them in the house because they stink. So I've got to buy a new one or put them through the washing machine. They just go on like that, and they will save you sunglasses. And they perfect. Stops them falling off your face when you're bending down you know, um, either pumping bait or whatever you're doing. They're really, really good. Um, also, the rod that I used today was my Mercuro. Um, it's a Shimano two to four kilo stick. Um, and I've uh, matched that up with a 1,000 Nasky reel. These are absolutely brilliant. I've, up, I've actually got the whole range from the 2,500 to the 4,000 as well for the snapper. And um, they just don't miss a beat. Just so long as I, I look after them, make sure that they um, get wiped down and washed at the end of every time I've taken them out. And uh, yeah, absolutely perfect uh, little setup this. And you can just cast all day with it. Uh, the line that I use is Power Pro Braid. Uh, I've got six pound um, Power Pro Braid on there. And when I'm poppering or using the poppers, I use uh, Snyder um, nine pound uh, leader. Okay, it's mono leader too. Now the reason why I use mono leader is because I find with the fluorocarbon it tends to sink when I'm using that for poppering. Um, it's fine for plastics, but uh, yeah, and the nine, Nine pound leader, the heavier leader tends to keep the, um, the popper tracking straight um, and it just, you know, sort of pops along just nicely. Um, unfortunately, we didn't get any white in today, but a really good time on the floodhead. Um, also good if you've got a strong leader and you get a decent floodhead on, especially with those gill rakers. Um, so yeah, that's what I use anyway. Um, also take one of these guys along with me just to basically store my rod um, straight in the ground. Even good for putting the GoPro on if you want to do a bit of filming. And um, I also take an extra box just to put all my um, lures that have got salt water on them. Alright guys, that's basically what I use. I'll show you a couple of uh, the um, lures that I was using today as well. And some of the lures I do use all the time on the, uh, when I'm on the beach or fishing the estuaries. And uh, especially on the flats. I've got a couple of really nice little lures that work really, really well. Okay, and I'll show you that. Lures that I use um, when I do fishing on the flats or, or fishing um, down the estuary sometimes, just in really shallow water. Um, so what I've got here, this is for the whiting. This is the one that the uh, flathead um, absolutely smacked. It actually hit it up in the air. Um, unfortunately, it didn't hook up, but geez, it was a bit of fun. It came out like a, like a little marlin. We're only in around about two to three foot of water. And um, yeah, the, the flathead will hit these. 
and I've caught plenty of whiting on this guy. Um, I've got to change these up a little bit. These are a little bit big, these assist hooks. I've caught whiting on them, but normally the larger whiting, the elbow slappers, but the smaller ones. Um, you can catch them on here, but um, yeah, I need to just change that a little bit, change it up. Um, so yeah, that's, that's the actual popper that we used. Um, I used this one as well today. I've got to get rid of this treble off there because the treble's just a little bit too big and these were catching up a little bit with it. Um, so don't be as scared to, you know, when you get them in the packet, it doesn't necessarily mean these are, it's exactly set up for how you want it to work. Um, these are perfect, these assist hooks, they're just really small and uh, you've got this little feather on the end which um, hides the hooks but also attracts the, the whiting. Um, and also the Trevally love these, Trevally love them, uh, Brimmel smack these as well. Um, but yeah, really, really good, the sugar pen. Um, when it comes to soft plastics, um, I use a, a very, 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 you know, like normally I'll use things like this. This is the old Bloodworm Wriggler. Um, squidgy Bloodworm Wriggler, this has been around for years. And uh, it looks like it's in pumpkin seed. Um, I've had this for ages. I've caught plenty of fish on this. I actually got a uh, 80 centimeter um, flooded on this, just lightly trawling it behind the boat one day. And it was this exact lure, so I've still been using it, um, which is great. Always wash everything off at the end of the day. Um, what else? I've, this is a Holt prawn. These are, um, these are really good. A lot of people are using these in the Noosa River and they're uh, accounting for a lot of fish. Um, this is, uh, just travels around like a little jelly prawn, especially when the uh, prawns are running and also all this moves around so it just absolutely looks just like a little prawn fleeing. Uh, really, really slowly you can slow roll them and they work really, really well. Also, um, I've had this for years. This is another one. This is from the old times of when I was in Botany Bay. It uh, resembles a little yabby and that's another squidgy. That works really, really well as well. And I always lightly, just really a light jig head for this guy and let it just um, sort of, you know, as you see the yabbies, when they come out of the yabby hole when you pump them, it just works just like a yabby. And um, yeah, they, they get hit quite regularly. This is one of my new favorites. This is a salt and pepper uh, squidgy. And this is the bio turf, look at that, the way it <laughs> stretches right up. They're really, really good. They last for ages. Um, and that's what you want when you're buying a, you know, like a plastic, you want it to last for a while. But they're also uh, biodegradable, which is great. And um, this wriggly tail here, just, they, they just can't resist it. It's great for whiting, brim, and flooded. Um, all your bread and butter species, they absolutely love that. But um, I have been getting in the Noosa River quite a few little GTs on these as well. They love that as well, that profile coming through the water. You can let it um, drop down really slowly, like so, or you can um, actually roll it back really quickly and um, the tail just stretches straight out and it's, it's, they're an awesome little um, plastic. You can also get them in the larger size for if you want to deep, fish some deeper water. That's the squidgy bio stuff. They are amazing. Um, also I use a little popper. Uh, the, I find that the, the see-through poppers are the best. Um, anything that's white, see-through and um, also with a bit of uh, feather on there. I've, this one's had a lot of work. I've caught brim on, brim on this. I've caught whiting. Whiting really enjoy um, chasing these little small poppers, especially the clear ones. And this is the one that did all the damage today. This guy here, um, it's a little shad profile. Now, I can't remember for the life of me who makes these lures. I wouldn't have a clue. Um, it's not actually written on there, but I think I got it out of one of those lucky bags, to be honest. It was a $5 pack and I just liked the look of it. And I was actually bought this for bass, um, but it's worked really, really well today um, on flooded. If you're not too sure how to do the loop knot, um, Scott's got one in his tackle talk. There's a video there, so check out Scotty's uh, loop knot. Um, and I hope you've enjoyed everything today, guys, and maybe learned something. I know that I'm learning all the time since I've moved up here to Noosa from Sydney. Um, it's, a t it's a completely uh, different kettle of fish, um, the fishing up here, and I'm learning every day and uh, really, really enjoying it. So the more I get out, the more clips I do, the more I'm starting to learn about how to fish this area up here. So I hope you enjoyed this video. Um, I'm going to cook up the flathead in a couple of weeks time. I'm going to do a really nice teriyaki uh, flathead. I'm going to show you how to do that. So hopefully you'll tune in for that. And um, we'll see you every Friday here at The Hook and the Cook. Take care guys and that's it for this week. See you next week.
We'd like to give a big thank you to all our sponsors for 2019.